Yo, welcome to my little screen manuscript. You do. Today, we're going to be looking at what I think is the current tier list for standard format. I'm recording this on October 6th, so things might change drastically in a week. Uh, shout out to Omnipoke for making this tier list. If you have not checked them out on YouTube, you should. I find it hard to believe if you found my channel and you haven't found their channel, but Omnipoke created this. I think it's really good. I'll link it down in the description if you want to try your own as well. Let's go ahead and uh, jump through what I think currently. So my number one deck, my S tier, far and away due to power level, above all else, is going to be single strike Urshifu slash Umbreon. I think you play both in the same deck for sure. Occasionally you see people like, oh, I'm going to cut the Urshifu VMAX or I'm going to play heavier bear, lower Umbreon line. I think you want a nice little mixture between the two, but it is just the best deck in the format. It is the most powerful deck. It can Oko anything. It has the ability to gust more than anything else with Umbreon's ability. I think it is the best deck in the format. The reason it's not far and away the best deck is consistency. It doesn't always get exactly what it needs on every single turn, and especially in a best of one online meta, you know, you don't always win the game <laughs> no matter what, no matter how much of an auto win something is, sometimes you just lose. And so single strike is the best deck in the format, but the mirror sucks, which is a good reason not to play it. And in best of one, sometimes you just have an opening hand or a really bad turn one and you lose the game because of that. Also in S tier, I am going to go ahead and put both Suicunes. This is one that might be a little bit of a, hmm, I think both Suicunes are also S tier. They're S tier for a different reason than single strike is though. Single Strike is S tier because it has no actual weakness because you have multiple attackers, you have energy acceleration, you can Oko stuff, you can gut, it just has so many options. Suicunes are both S tier because it is the most consistent deck in the format. Suicune will just set up and hit you every single turn. Another reason Suicune is so high is it is a two prize deck. As a two prize deck, you have a few advantages. One of them is you essentially just have an extra turn. As a two prizer, you just kind of naturally get one more turn to play the game than every other deck in the format, and that is huge. The other thing is, you don't have to have a V down the turn your VMAX is going to get KO'd. This is also true of Single Strike as well. Single Strike can attack with their Vs pretty well, but other decks, you know, something like a Dolteon, a Leafeon, an Ice Rider, etc., you need to have a V down the turn your VMAX gets KO'd, or you really aren't attacking on the next turn. Suicune, no, you can just go get one on the next turn and worry about it later. That's another huge advantage. I think Suicune is the most consistent deck in the format, and that's what makes it S tier. In terms of power level, it is powerful, but it's not ridiculously powerful. And decks that we're going to put below it are more powerful than Suicune. Ludicolo does help, but I do have Ludicolo lower than the version without Ludicolo. Ludicolo is very cool, but. A good player will play around it pretty darn well. Uh, I have run into situations where I can just avoid benching too much, and the Ludicolo, or I guess, you know, whatever, the Ludicolo can't actually Oko me, and now you need some quick shootings too, and it just becomes a little awkward. So I think it's good, but I do prefer the version without overall. Okay, we're going to go ahead and move down, and we're going to do some decks slightly out of order now, because I'm not 100% sure on my ordering for the rest of everything else. My next one, gonna be controversial, but I think Rapid Strike Urshifu is a very, very good deck. And I'm currently looking for, there it is. Rapid Strike Urshifu and Teleon, I put the highest deck in A. I know a lot of you are gonna disagree with that, but the reason I have it up here is it is fine going second, the fact that you can go second, use keep calling, and still get the turn two rapid flow, and you can keep calling for your attackers, just feels so good. That's a big benefit. Gmax rapid flow on all of these evolving things like Drizzles or Hound Hours or whatever also feels really good. I think it is a deck that is very difficult to play. It is a little meta dependent because it takes some very bad matchups, but we've seen less Zashi and Zamazenta. I think that this deck is stepping up. You also take a good Suicune matchup, and the single strike matchup is 100% winnable. So to me, Rap Strike Urshifu is that deck. Like I said, I know a bunch of you are going to disagree with that, especially when you see the next step I'm going to put up here is Dragapult VMAX. It's one of those, Rap Strike Urshifu doesn't like to see it. 
But Dragapult VMAX, it is a very low maintenance attacker. You know, two psychic energies, which are very easy to find with your fog crystals that you play multiple of. You go Path of the Peak plus Marnie, and then you go Zigzagoon Ping and KO Sobble on the bench. Boy, you're in a really good spot. And this is one of the reasons why people are trying to play the 70 HP Sobble. If people play the 70 HP Sobble, I think Dragapult becomes a little bit weaker and I think would get outclassed by Jolteon. But until then, I do think Dragapult slightly edges out what my next deck is going to be, which is Jolteon VMAX. Jolteon VMAX, incredibly strong. Bad matchups against both of the Bears, but the single strike matchup is 100% winnable, and every other matchup is actually pretty favored for Jolteon. Jolteon is just such a good spot if you can avoid hitting too many of the Bears. So to me, Jolteon is right there with Dragapult. It's kind of meta dependent. Like I said, if people start playing the higher HP Sobbles, I do think I would switch these two. But as of right now, most decks are still playing Keep Calling consistently. And because of that, I think Dragapult is slightly ahead of it because doing 100 damage to a 60 HP Sobble doesn't really change versus going Zigzagoon Ping and five damage counters. And the five damage counters from Dragapult do make a very big difference. And Pult takes. Less auto losses. Single Strike still a bad matchup for Pult. Single Strike reigns supreme. But Pult can beat Single Strike. Pult bodies Rapid Strike. Jolteon takes that hard loss to it. And Jolteon also should beat Suicune. But I think a good Suicune Ludicolo player can hit that 300 HP pretty consistent. So as we look down here, a lot of these other decks, uh, I'm just going to throw some stuff in here that I know where it's going to go. Rayquaza. We're going to put it in D tier. But I'm just going to rename this to Don't Bob. I would not touch Rayquaza with a 10 foot pole. It's just not it. Drakezolt, same thing. Drakezolt is a very fun deck, but just, just don't touch it right now. It's cool. If you're fine not winning, that's fine. If you think you can outplay people, that's fine. But as of right now, Drakezolt just isn't it because we know what it is. We didn't used to know what it is. But now we know how Drakezolt works. So we're going to throw Drake Azult down there. Next deck that I want to throw on here is going to be Leafeon. Leafeon, I really like it. I am a big fan of Leafeon. I have been for a while. Galar Mine is just a generally good card. And the fact that it works with your first attack is so nice. The fact you accelerate to yourself makes winning the coin flip even better. Every deck wants to go first, but Leafeon going first, boy, I think... It's just become slightly favorite against literally every deck in the format if Leafeon goes first and gets a Leafeon down. The Leafeon is another A tier deck. I think it is noticeably behind the other decks, but not noticeably enough to jump down a tier. This is S tier is the, I'd be comfortable walking into any meta in the world with them. These are a little meta dependent, little less powerful than some of the other decks. The next one we're going to throw in is Ice Rider. Ice Rider, I think, is just worse than Suicune most of the time. The keyword is most of the time. Things it has advantage over is you're not weak to Jolteon, which is very nice. So Jolteon's hitting you for 100 instead of 200, 100 uh, snipe on the bench. That's a really big deal. The other thing is it doesn't get O code. Now that people are playing Scrapper, that does hurt Suicune a bit. So instead of having 260 HP as a Suicune, you have 210 most of the time. So Suicune. I still play the cape. I still think Suicune's so good. But people playing multiple Scrappers or Jammers does make Ice Rider a pretty good option. Just like Welder in the past, I think Melanie is a good card. There is always going to be a Melanie deck meta. Just like there was always a Welder deck meta, there's always going to be a Melanie deck. The question is, what is the best way to play Melanie? I do think it's currently Suicune, but Ice Rider is up there as well. Next deck is going to be Urshifu Moltres. We're going down to the B tier. This is the pretty darn good. I think I am one of the few people who would put Urshifu Moltres below the Urshifu Inteleon. I think a lot of people would put this above. I think even the results would put it above. But Urshifu Moltres, very good. You hit some good type coverage. You get the weakness on Dragapult, which is nice. Uh, you got the weakness on Shadow Rider, but Shadow Rider's not played very much, which is nice. You have a two prizer and you can G Max Rapid Flow consistently. I've been messing with Urshifu Melanie. Urshifu Melanie is a more consistent Rapid Flow every turn deck, but it doesn't have the insane type coverage. It can't go three prizer, two prizer. 
you know, Moltres is also a good Zamazenta out that regular Urshifu doesn't really have. Good deck, lots of utility. I think it's pretty solid. The next one is Sylveon. Sylveon is a deck in terms of power level, would be A tier. In terms of consistency, it's probably actually down here. So we're going to split the middle. I think if you're going to play an inconsistent deck, you play the more powerful single strike, but I love Sylveon. I think it is a very fun deck. The fact that you have multiple attackers that have multiple weaknesses is so good. Sylveon's good. It can win any tournament that you take it to. Problem is, are you going to set up? If you don't set up, you lose the game in this format. That's kind of how it works. Games are a little too fast to make these very strong comebacks. I think Sylveon is so good. How do you play it? I don't know. That's, that's kind of up to you. But a very good deck, very strong deck, slightly inconsistent deck. If you're going to play a best of three tournament, I could see a world where it becomes A tier. But again, I think just play single strike if you're going to play a deck that doesn't set up every single time. Next one is... So technically Weezing's the one on this picture, but Sableye is here as well. Sableye Weezing with Inteleon is going to be the next one. I think Sableye is such a strong card. Issue with this deck is the Suicune matchup is pretty sketchy. And other matchups can also get pretty bad. Jolteon and Dragapult being able to KO your stuff before you get set up is really good. This deck relies a lot on do you set up your Weezing and stop your opponent. Because plenty of decks are like, eh, I don't need to Drizzile because your deck kind of sucks if I just set up slightly. So Suicune, bad matchup. A Jolteon that's able to pick off multiple Sobbles so you can't actually do the Raihan shenanigans with Sableye. Kind of a bad matchup. So good deck, very meta dependent. If your local meta is a lot of VMAX decks and yeah, that's it. If your local meta is a lot of VMAX decks, just Bring Sableye, it's a pretty good play. Uh, oh, Single Strike's also a bad matchup. What am I talking about? Single Strike's also not a good one. You just don't VMAX, and the Sableye deck becomes a little weaker. I know you're like, oh, but the Weezing shuts off. Yeah, but the Weezing doesn't do enough to actually auto-win that matchup. A good Single Strike player will be able to play around the Galarian Weezing. I promise you this. As someone who has played both sides of that matchup, it is not an auto-win, even though it seems like it should be on paper. Uh, next deck we're going to throw in here is, you know what, we're going to throw a tier real quick. Add a row below. We're just going to throw a walls. Both Duraludon and Decidueye are just going to go here so I can stop looking at them. Very met, very meta dependent. It's like, they're not special. They're not particularly good. Uh, I think Decidueye, one of its strengths in online tournaments right now, I would put Decidueye above Duraludon too. Throw that out there. But one of its strengths in online tournaments, get back over there, is a lot of people don't know how to beat Decidueye when they have the quick shooting Inteleons, but it is very much something that you can do. So Decidueye, decent play, very meta dependent, very matchup dependent. Duraludon, same thing. You can just hit the right matchups. But one of the issues with Duraludon is the most. A uh, special energy heavy deck in the format has a shred attack. The VMAX Oko's your Duraludon, and it goes right through the effect of the Duraludon. The Duraludon, yes, it is definitely a deck. You can do well with it. I think it's meta dependent, and currently, the best decks in the format and the most played decks in the format really don't care that you exist. Decidueye, I think it's in a better spot, but like I said, it's meta dependent, so I'm not going to put it in ABC. I'm also not going to put it in Don't Bother because it is above that. Decidueye is a playable deck. All right, next I want to throw in here is... Let's throw Zashi and Zamazenta up here, actually. Zashi and Zamazenta, I think, is a viable deck. It's, like, debatably C tier. It's a bit meta-dependent. It's debatably in walls as well, but the Zashi is quite good. So I'm going to put it up here, and one of the reasons I'm going to put it up here is I think Zashi and Inteleon just isn't a very good deck. And we have to put it a tier below. And I don't want to go below C tier because eh, we got plenty of tiers already. So Zashi and Zamazenta, good deck. Zamazenta does beat some stuff automatically. Some people have been taking Path out of Jolteon. So you beat the Jolteon now. So yeah, it's a solid deck. You can definitely win some games with it. For sure. You beat Leafeon too. Or you should be able to beat Leafeon. Uh, I don't think they play Phoebe or anything like that. But you take some just really bad matchups. You're just a worse version of Suicune. Single Strike should be beating you most of the time. If Jolteon plays Path, Jolteon should be beating you most of the time. So, it's a pretty solid deck, but also 
And it's just, it feels a little underwhelming a lot of the time. Next one I'm going to throw, same in this category is Victini. Victini is a good deck too. I'm just not a huge fan of Victini because it's a fairly linear deck of, I really hope I hit my hammers and I really hope I just get to hit you hard. <laughs> and that's it. And it's a deck. It's a solid deck. It's not that powerful. You should auto lose to Suicune. Now, with that said, you can beat it for sure. You draw the right cards at the right time. They don't draw the right cards at the right time. And you do win. That's pretty cool. But solid deck, not broken. It's playable for sure. So that's why it's above C tier. Uh, next deck we're going to throw in here. I want it to be better. This is going to be my top deck in C tier, Inteleon VMAX. It feels good, but it feels like it's missing things. And definitely some of the things it's missing are the promo Inteleon V and VMAX that we didn't get that Japan got. I want it to be higher. I think it will be higher moving into the future. But unfortunately, the sniping is really good, but it's just worse than Jolteon in terms of sniping. Also, Jolteon existing is really bad for it too. And then in terms of Melanie decks, I think Suicune's just better. The problem with Inteleon is it does two things very well. One of them is utilizes Melanie. The other one is Snipe. Problem is, it's just a worse sniping deck than Jolteon and probably Polt. It takes weakness to Jolteon, which is bad. And here's the worst Melanie deck than Suicune as well. So I love Inteleon. I think it's solid. I've played Inteleon in a tournament and did well with it. But in the end, Inteleon, I'm sorry. You're just, you're just not quite there yet. Next one is Rapstrike Malamar. Issue with Rapstrike Malamar right now is the amount of sniping. It hits really hard, really fast. No stamp is also so good for it. Problem is, Jolteon takes multi-prize turns. Holt takes multi-prize turns. Uh, Rapistrike Urshifu, whichever version, takes multi-prize turns. So, uh, solid, but also a little bit weak, unfortunately. Uh, the fact there's no bench barrier hurts it. Suicune's also potentially a tough one, because hitting a Cape of Toughness Suicune, Oko, three turns in a row, is incredibly difficult for the deck. I love Rapistrike Mally. It ain't it, though. Next up I'm going to throw on here is Eternatus. If people cut paths and Zamazenta stays low, I think Eternus will move its way up. But as of right now, four path, four path, eh, sometimes plays path, four path. That's just a little too much for E-turn because then you also have auto loss, auto loss, auto loss. Should be an auto loss if played properly and or doesn't brick. So E-turn, very good deck in the right meta. This is not the meta for Eternatus. If you're an Eternatus fan, keep it away for now, but keep an eye out as people cut Path of the Peak. You can suddenly go like, oh, three Zigzagoon pings, Oko one of these, KO one of these with no problem. You may say, oh, you don't even need a full bench to KO this. You do need to use Crobat. That's a really big deal here. So E-turn, it will eventually make its way up to B when the meta is good for it, but the meta is not good for it right now. Shadow Rider, about the same spot of E-turn where too much path for it right now. The power level's good, but it's not quite good enough. Auto loss to Umbreon also really sucks. You also take some just tough matchups against a lot of stuff. Jolteon's a surprisingly bad matchup, even without path and with path. It's just so gross. So, Shadow Rider, look, you need Whorehouse GX in order to be as strong as you were. This one, I'm not sure if I want to put it in C or the Don't Bother tier. I think I'm going to throw it in. C, just because it has potential, Blaziken, Urshifu, kind of a cheryl build is what I'm thinking of that one. Very tempted to throw it in Don't Bother, but it's good enough. So here's kind of the tier list of where I'm at. S tier, bring it anywhere, anytime. I think any of these decks can win literally any tournament, no matter what the meta is, at any given point, if played properly. A tier, a little more meta dependent. They're all pretty consistent. They all have pretty good power level, but they just lack something that these have. B tier, they're usually just worse versions of decks that are already better. <laughs> so they're fine. You can win a tournament with them. In fact, many of you probably have won or top cut tournaments with any of these decks. But again, need the good meta. And for the most part, just play something above it and you're fine. And C tier, sometimes we're waiting for the right meta. Sometimes it's just like, eh, you know what? This ain't your time, Chief. Sorry, Inteleon. Don't bother. They're fun. If you're fine losing, you can play them. And our walls, they're definitely decent little decks. 
So let me know what you think below. I'm 100% sure plenty of you are going to disagree with some of these. Looking at you, Rapid Strike Urshifu, my top deck in A tier. But let me know what you think too. I'm always interested. I'm happy to, I don't want to say debate. Debate's the wrong word, but I'm happy to discuss any rankings that I have as far as you disagree or potentially agree with me as well. And remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that other YouTube stuff, and I will catch you all in the next video. Peace out.